Hello everyone. In this video, we will discuss about Python data types. So, let's start with integers. First, integer. Okay. If you want to store integer values in any variable, I will just define the name of variable. Let's say num1 equals to 100. Okay. So, this is my integer value. So, while defining a value, you do not have to define the data type of it. You will just play with the values. So, I'm saying num1 equals to 100. Now, how to check type? I'm saying print and type of num1. So, type function will return me what is the data type of a particular variable. So, I have written print type of num1. Save it and run it. So it will show this is an integer variable. Okay. So if you want to store any integer value, just create a variable and assign some integer numbers. So integer numbers, so numbers which will not contain any decimals. Next data type is float. If you want to store any decimal numbers, you will go with this data type. Again, to define this, I'm saying number 2 and let's assign some floating value to this. Alright, so I'm saying 15.25. Again, to check type, I'm saying print type of num2. Alright, if you run this, it will show, okay, this is the float. Okay, now. Integer and a float are immutable data types. Now what I mean by immutable? So any data type for which I cannot change the value is said to be an immutable data type. Okay? Now let's say I'm saying num1 equals to 100. Okay? Now Python will be storing this particular variable at a particular memory location. So to print the memory location, I'm saying print it of num1. Okay, run it. Now it will give me the memory location. Okay, so let's say this num1 is stored at this memory location. Now, when I'm saying num1 equals to 105, and if I check the memory location again, okay, it will store this particular value at a different memory location. And I cannot modify the value at same memory location. That's why integer is said to be an immutable data type. Okay. Same goes with the floats. So integer and the floats are immutable data types. Next is your string. Now anything which is enclosed in single quotes or double quotes. Or a triple quotes is a valid Python string. So how to define a string? Let's take any variable s is equals to I'm saying Python. So I'm enclosing this into a double quotes. Okay. So now I'm saying print s. Okay. It will print me the exact string that is Python. If you want to check type, again I will go with type function. So type of s. Okay, so it will show me this is a string. Okay, again, string is a immutable data type, which means now if I assign a different value, let's say s is equals to new value. Okay, so for the same variable, I'm changing the value. Now if I print id of s. It will store at a different memory location and for this I am also going to check the memory location. So I am saying id of s. Okay. So now you can see these two different values are stored at two different memory location and I cannot modify the values at same memory location. That's why it's said to be an immutable data. Okay. 
Another thing, wide support, single quote, double quote, and triple quotes. Okay. So let's say in the same example, I want this Python. Let's say let's change the string to Python sample string. Okay. Now I want this Python enclosed in a single quotes. Okay. Now if I try to add another double quotes here. So Sublime will also show some changes in color codes. Now it will be interpreted as okay, this is an empty string. Then there is a variable named Python. Okay. And then there is another string which is sample string. Okay. It will not consider that okay. This Python sample string is an entire string, and from that is Python to be enclosed in a quotes. Okay. So instead of that, I will use double quotes outside and I will use single quotes. For the string Python. Now, if I print this, we can see that Python is added in a single quote, and this is the whole string. Okay, so this is the overview of your string data type. Next data type is a list. Okay, now what is list? So list is something if you want to add multiple values, you can go with your list. Again, how to define list? So anything which is enclosed in square brackets is a list in Python. Okay, let's take L is equals to now I'm adding 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Okay, so this is the list which contains multiple integer values. Okay, also now let's just print this for now. Okay, so it will show the elements and formulas. Now, Python lists are heterogeneous, which means I can store different type of data in this particular list. Okay. Let's say for now I'm adding this five integer values. Now let's try to add some string into it. Okay. Comma, I'm adding Python. Then let's say Django. Okay. And I'm printing this. Okay. So now you can see it will add integer plus the string values also. Okay. Uh, this list is said to be a mutable data type. Okay. Now what is mutable data type? Which means Python provi will provide me a way to add, update, and delete the elements from this particular list. Okay. And it I can add elements or I can update or I can delete the elements from the same list and from the same memory location, okay? Just to demonstrate the same, I'm saying id of this L, okay? Let's say this particular list is saved at this location, okay? Now, I'm using one of the list methods, that is list.append, okay, and 60. So don't worry about this method. Uh, we will come to this method. What are this method to add, update, and delete? Okay. But for now, let's say this is the method to add a single element to your list. Okay. And I'm printing the list again. Now you can see it has added this element 60 at end of the list. Okay. Now let's check the ID after appending. So for that, I'm just saying print ID of you can see the memory location will be seen. Okay. So Python will allow me to add, update and delete the elements at same memory location. That's why lists are mutable. Okay. Next. So next data type is tuple. Okay. How to define a tuple? So I will just take any variable and for tuple I'll be enclosing the multiple elements into parentheses. Okay. So it is same as list that it will also store multiple elements of different data types. Okay. The only difference between tuple and the list will be list is a mutable data type while tuple is an immutable, which means I cannot add or update or delete elements from this tuple. So once I define the elements, I cannot change the tuple. Okay. 
then next data type is dictionary So when I say dictionary, Python will store the values in a key and the value pair. Okay, it is also called as a hash maps. So how to define a dictionary? Again, take any variable, and you will enclose all your elements into curly brackets. So inside curly brackets, I will say a key. Let's say name is equals to abc, and let's say email id. Is it plus two A B C okay. now in the dictionary your values are added in a key and the value pair. Okay, so your key and the value pair will be separated by colon. Okay, and you can add multiple key and the value pair which is separated by comma. Okay, again dictionary is a mutable data type. So next data type is sets. Okay. So how to define a set? I will say s equals to in curly brackets the elements. Okay. So again, set is a mutable data types, which means I can add, update, and delete the elements from the set. Okay. Uh, using set, I can perform all set operation like union, intersection, symmetric difference. Okay. So that we will discuss in upcoming videos. So now let's go ahead with the next one and next is boolean okay there will be only two values for this one is true and second is false okay now this true and false are two keywords in python so while writing this you have to specify like this only you will not enclose them in a double quotes it is not a string so you will just say true with capital t and the false with capital F. Okay. Last data type is your complex. If you want to work on some complex numbers, you can do that operation using this data type. So the format will be the real part plus imaginary part that I will define with J. Okay. And this is the complex data types. So this was just overview about all data types. In upcoming videos, we will discuss each data type in detail. The reason when I just say string, okay. So for a single data type, Python provides lots of inbuilt functions. Okay. So just for a demo, if I just say help or string. Now this help function will give you the methods which are available for this particular data type. I'm saving it and I'm running it. So as you can see, uh, Python will provide a lot of inbuilt method like uh, uppercase, lowercase, so you can change case, then you can split it into a list, you can join a list, you can format your text, so all such operation and it is for every data type. So in upcoming videos, we will focus on each data types. Okay. So this was just overview. In next video, we will discuss about Python operators. Stay tuned and happy learning.